Hello, freshmen. Um, so we are going to start. We just finished Act One. We're going to start working on Act Two of Romeo and Juliet. And um, this is the most famous act in all of literature. And we are uh, going to skip the prologue because we don't really care. So we're going to start with scene one. We want to remind ourselves of our annotations. The thing that's nice about scene one is it's super short and we're not going to be highlighting anything. We are going to be writing some things in the margins. So we'll do some notes in the margins, but there's not a lot. It's a really simple scene. It's like a transition scene. So uh, this scene starts directly after the party. Um, the uh, boys, Romeo, Benvolio, Mercutio have left the party. And if you remember, you know, Romeo's leaving and Juliet says to the nurse, who is that boy? And she says, oh, that's Romeo. And then she's like, oh, kill me now. I love my, the person that my family hates. Romeo leaves, right? They're walking by a wall on the Capulet property that goes into the Capulet orchard, right? So that if, if they climb the wall, they'd be over. So Romeo says, can I go forward when my heart is here? Turn back dull earth and find thy center out. So he climbs the wall and leaps down in it. Now, like I said, this is directly after the party. And I would probably say it's like midnight, maybe one in the morning. They've been partying for a while. And uh, so he jumps over the wall. Benvolio and Mercutio kind of see him, like his leg going over. They see him doing this. Romeo, my cousin Romeo, he is wise and on my lie hath stolen him home to bed. He ran this way and leaped this orchard wall. Call good Mercutio. Um, so we're going to add a note, comment box right here. And we're going to say Mercutio and Benvolio didn't see Romeo at the party and believe that he is still depressed because of Rosaline. Now we know Romeo's totally over Rosaline, but the characters don't. This is dramatic irony in the play. And so they think that he's climbing over this wall because he's depressed and he's acting strange. And the reason he's acting strange is because of Rosaline. But we know that he's acting strange because he just fell in love, love at first sight with Juliet. Mercutio says, nay, I'll conjure too. Romeo, humors, madman, passion lover. Appear thou in the likeness of a sigh. Speak but one rhyme and I am satisfied. Cry but I, me. Pronounce but love and dove. Speak to my gossip Venus. One fair word, one nickname for her pure blind son and heir. Young Adam Cupid, he that shot so trim when King Cophetua loved the beggar maid. He heareth not. He stirreth not. He moveth not. The ape is dead and I must conjure him. I conjure thee by Rosaline's bright eyes. See, that's why, see, they say that because they think that he's still, he's still in love with Rosaline. By her high forehead and her scarlet lip, by her fine foot, straight leg and quivering thigh. And then the demisness there, that there lie, adjacent lie, that in thy likeness thou appear to us. So we're going to write here that Mercutio is teasing Romeo. All right. Evolio. And if he hear thee, thou wilt anger him. This cannot anger him. It would anger him to raise a spirit in his mistress's circle of some strange nature, letting it there stand till she had laid it and conjured it down that were some spite in my invocation is fair and honest. And in his mistress's name, I conjure only but to raise him up. Come, he hath hid himself among these trees to be consorted with the humorous night. Love, blind is his love and best befits the dark. Remember that light and dark that we had going on earlier on when, when Romeo is all depressed, he goes into his room and he shuts it up. If love be blind, love cannot hit the mark. Now will he sit under a meddler tree and wish his mistress were that kind of fruit as maids called meddlers when they laugh alone? Romeo, that she were, oh, that she were, an open etc. Thou a pauper in pair. Romeo, good night. I'll to my truckle bed. This field bed is too cold for me to sleep. Come, shall we go? 
Go then, for tis in vain to seek him here that means not to be found. Okay, that's scene one. Easy peasy. So remember, you got to do your after reading. There is some uh, light and dark in this one, so I'd make sure that you highlight for that. And then I'll see you next time for uh, Act 2, Scene 2. Okay, bye.